Cross-site request forgery is one of the most common web attacks on the internet. Not the most common, not the number one. That title would go to cross-site scripting, but cross-site request forgery, or CSRF, is an attack that forces an end user to execute unwanted actions on a web application in which they're currently authenticated. It's essentially an exploit in the trust that web applications have in authenticated users, so users that are already logged in, where they can't differentiate between a request that was generated legitimately by that user or without their consent. And there's many different ways that an illegitimate request may be created. So let's say, for example, that Bob has an online banking account at examplebank.com and he wants to send some money to his wife, Alice. But unfortunately, Bob is unaware that this site has vulnerabilities because Example Bank gave large bonuses to their executives. Instead of spending some money on revamping their IT department or hiring more competent developers, which right now is just some kid that copy pasted most of the site code off of Stack Exchange. Meanwhile, a black hat hacker discovered somebody talking about the vulnerability that the site had on a Laotian ice fishing forum and decided to use his knowledge of this vulnerability to try and steal some money from Bob. Now, in order for the attacker to pull this off, they need to create an exploit URL and then trick Bob into clicking on that exploit URL and Bob needs to click on it while he has an active authenticated session with Example Bank. So the Example Bank app is built using the get method to submit a transfer request to another account because that's what the dev found on Stack Exchange. So this is going to be what the URL looks like when he sends a transfer request of $1,000 to his wife. So this is Alice's account number towards the end here. And then right here, after amount equals, this is the amount that Bob wants to send to her. So obviously, this isn't how you would want to build an online bank, but if Bob visits this URL while he's logged into the bank, then that amount of money is going to get sent to that account number. So. That's really bad because the attacker can just change this account number to his own and then bam, he now has an exploit URL. He can also change the amount if he wants. Maybe he wants to get uh, $10,000 instead of $1,000. Now, as far as sending this to Bob using social engineering to get him to click it, that's going to be pretty easy to do. In fact, it's actually easier to get this type of link through an email than it would be a regular phishing scam because it's going to be a legitimate website. You know, the domain is Example Bank. Everybody uses Example Bank in, in this example. Uh, it's a pretty crap website, but still, it's less likely to get filtered than a scam website uh, and also unlikely to get filtered by the browser but you don't even have to send an email to Bob, okay? Because of course you need to know Bob's email in order to do that, and maybe you don't for whatever reason. So you can instead just create your own website that executes this cross-site request forgery automatically whenever Bob visits it. And then obviously got to get him to visit it, uh, but that gives you more options. Maybe you can tweet it at him or something like that. Uh, and here is an example of what that code might look like. So it doesn't really matter uh, what you display on the page because this is just automatically going to execute in the background it's basically pretending like uh, that malicious link is an image so like a zero by zero image it's, nothing actually has to pop up but it's your browser is going to try to load it uh, so there's no human intervention needed to pull something like that off another common one is to create a form in the background uh, like say if you wanted to use CSRF to make someone delete their account, if there's a specific URL to go to to do that, and it might have a checkbox asking if you really want to delete that account, uh, you could just create an invisible form to fill all of that out and have JavaScript execute on the page to send that without any user intervention as soon as you visit that malicious website. And of course, if the exploit can be done with just URL, uh, like you see here. But remember, Bob has to be logged into his account for this to work. So let's say that Bob has this weird routine where he only checks his email in the morning and he only checks his bank account at night. I know that's weird, but that's how Bob is. 
Uh, so he's never going to be authenticated when he clicks this link, or maybe he doesn't check his email when he checks it, or his Twitter when he checks his bank. Um, and if he clicks on this when he's not authenticated, that could actually foil the attacker's plans to steal from Bob, because of course, the link in the email or whatever is going to be concealed as something else. It might even be concealed uh, as an image tag, which is again, going to make Bob's browser open it automatically. But if Bob is not logged in to his bank, then clicking the link might actually prompt him to log in. And then he's gonna know that something's up because why is this random link making me uh, log into my bank? So the attacker needs to get Bob when his bank account is open, and maybe the attacker discovers that Bob is a coomer. He does a little bit of recon on him, and he discovers that's why he's always opening up his bank account at night, because that is when he's chatting with e-girls, sending them screenshots of his bank account in exchange for nudes and attention. So Bob naturally clicks on this site that has e-girls on it. Maybe he'll post this site in the e-girl's chat where it promises to have leaked photos of his favorite e-girl and as soon as Bob goes to this that CSRF that is embedded in the site executes as soon as Bob's browser renders it and it sends the money to the hacker or maybe the attacker isn't even after money he just wants to destroy Bob after discovering his degeneracy he might send all of the money that Bob has to the e-girl's account with CSRF and his wife finds out, divorces him, the e-girl retires after they get that big payday, and Bob is left wifeless and penniless with nothing to fap to, such as lust, the downfall of man. So how do you prevent cross-site request forgery on a website that you're building? Well, these days, most frameworks actually have built-in CSRF protection, so really all you have to do is validate if you're using a framework that has it and read the manual and use it. If not, uh, or let's say if you're not using a framework, uh, you'll want to add CSRF tokens to all state changing requests on your website. So whenever a user goes to do something that's gonna change your site, like say if in the online banking example, they select an account and fill out an amount of money to send and then they click the send button, uh, along with this information, your site needs to generate a one-time token, which is just gonna be a string of random characters, and that string is gonna have to be validated along with the rest of the info that that user's browser is sending. So an attacker, in order to do CSRF in this example, uh, they're going to have to figure out what that token is. And obviously, if this is a hash, like if it's 12 or more characters, that's pretty much gonna be impossible. Uh, just make sure that you aren't using an easy to reverse engineer algorithm to produce this token. Uh, make sure it's something random because if it's just a hash of like the current date and time of a request, then that's really trivial to implement into hackers CSRF. Usually if you're implementing this yourself, you'll use the user session ID and maybe add a salt to that and then hash that and use that long alphanumeric string as the token. And of course, make sure that your website isn't vulnerable to cross-site scripting because that will allow hackers uh, to do far worse things than CSRF and also undo any CSRF mitigations. So now you know about CSRF and some basics for how to prevent it on your website. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.